Hello again, minions. Wheezy here with another episode of Wheezy's FPS War College, a series dedicated to helping you get better at shooting people in the face. Uh, today, we're going to cover Enemy Engagement 101, and we'll find out what makes the grass grow. We all know it's blood. So let's go over the overview for what we're going to cover in this module today. We're going to cover engaging from a position of advantage, disengaging from positions of disadvantage, playing to your weapon's strengths, and using your equipment. So for those of you not familiar with how these modules work, we're gonna go through each of these topics, break them down, and we're gonna play some gameplay clips alongside it to illustrate what we're talking about as we go. So let's talk about engaging from a position of advantage. So the first thing we're gonna talk about when it comes to getting a position of advantage is using cover or concealment. This does a few things for us. It makes it hard for the enemy to return fire. It doesn't let the enemy know where we are, and this is important for visual, audio, and radar reasons. And we wanna make sure that we are acting instead of reacting. So cover and concealment, and the difference is important. Concealment is something that hides you from view, but doesn't protect you from bullets. Cover is something that protects you from bullets um, and also hides you from view. Um, I suppose there could be forms of cover like bulletproof glass that protect you from bullets but don't hide you from view. Doesn't matter. We're trying not to be seen or tracked by the enemies. Cover allows, makes it harder for them to return fire, meaning it get, makes you a smaller target. It makes it harder for you to hit, uh, harder for them to hit you. Um, and it just gives you an opportunity to make sure that these fights are unfair. And ultimately, that's what we're going for, is winning fights by not making them fair fights. Um, when we talk about not letting the enemy know where we are, this applies to not just being able to see you, but also, wherever possible in games, not be able to hear you and not be able to spot you on the radar. So this can, depending on the game and depending on whether or not there's perks or upgrades or special abilities, yes, we want to make sure we're moving around and using cover so the enemy can't see where we are, but we need to be aware in some games if it's easier to hear people's footsteps, you want to either move slower um, if that reduces footstep noise or use perks or uh, equipment or abilities that are available to help that make that quieter, um, as well as staying off the radar. And again, depending on the game, there might be perks or special abilities that are related to this. In a lot of games, it can be as uh, what can contribute that to contribute to that as well is using silencers on weapons. So we want to make sure that we are being aware of all of the different ways enemies can find out where we are, and robbing them of that potential information. So when I say we wanna act and not react, we wanna make sure that we are seizing the advantage and we're keeping enemies reacting to us instead of allowing them to come up with a counter and to plan. So when you're in a fight, when you're using cover, when you have a position where the enemy doesn't necessarily know where you're coming from, we wanna make sure that we take advantage of that and don't just sit there and wait for something to happen, that we take action that is going to give us whatever it is, achieving the objective, killing the enemy. Um, for enemy engagement, we are focusing on being able to defeat the enemy in gunfights. So um, let's move on to the next point, which is to shoot first. Now, shooting first is a combination of a few things. We wanna know where the enemy is likely to be. We wanna have our weapon pointed where the enemy will appear and we don't want to engage unless we are likely to win the fight. So knowing where the enemy is likely to be is kind of the is kind of a complementary topic to using cover and concealment. Whereas we're trying to rob the enemy of visual, audio, or radar advantage, we want to make sure that we're taking full advantage of that as much as possible. So we want to keep an eye on where we think enemies are going to appear. We want to have good audio equipment, headphones, or use perks that potentially allow us uh, an increased ability to hear where the enemy is located, as well as using things like radar to advantage, whether this could be kill streaks or um, just aspects built into the game. Again, the idea is this will apply to a variety of FPS games, um, 
And so we can address individual gameplay systems in separate videos as we go forward. Um, so the next thing is having our weapon pointed where the enemy is going to appear. So you often will hear this uh, referred to as slicing the pie. Fundamentally, what we're trying to do is increase our reaction speed and give us an advantage in a gunfight by making sure that our sights are already trained on where we think the enemy is most likely to appear. So that way, as soon as we see them, we can start firing. Whereas if you don't keep your crosshairs near where you expect to see an enemy, when you do find them, it's gonna take you some time to readjust your sights to aim at where they are. And then that can be the difference in winning and losing a gunfight. So keep that in mind. And when we say don't engage unless you are likely to win the fight, we wanna make sure that we know our weapons, we know kind of whether or not the person we're about to shoot at is in a position where we might get a kill. Are they about to go behind cover? Are they further than our weapon will allow? So that may, leaves a, leads us into a good transition to our next point, which is, yes, we wanna engage from a position of advantage, but we also want to disengage from positions where we are at a disadvantage. So let's start with our first point here, run for your life. Uh, if we're getting surprised or we're getting shot and we don't know where the enemy is, we want to make sure that we are not staying in that fight. If we're losing a fight or if we see a fight that we aren't likely to win, these are all reasons we would want to disengage from a fight. So when we say disengage, what we mean is take cover, get to a position where the enemy that is shooting at you can no longer shoot at you. So if you're being surprised or you don't know where the enemy is, you're in the position where you want to put the enemy, meaning you're reacting and they're acting. So we want to rob them of that advantage by moving out of that fight, taking cover, and then re-engaging from hopefully an unexpected position. Um, similarly, if we are losing a fight, meaning if maybe we thought we had a posi position of advantage or we came around a corner and it's just a one-on-one -on -one heads-up gunfight, if you are losing that fight, this is probably something that'll happen at medium to longer range. Um, at close range, these fights don't tend to give you an opportunity to escape. But if you are in a fight where you're starting to lose and you feel like you're not going to kill the enemy before they kill you, then if possible, break off that fight and, and run away. Move, take cover, again, recover, try to find a position that gives you a better advantage and then re-engage. Um, if you see a fight you aren't likely to win, this is going back to our last point on positions of advantage. If you aren't at the right range for your weapon or if the enemy is using cover or has a superior position like high ground or something like that, then don't even engage in that fight. Or if you are engaged in that fight, disengage. So if you, if you see someone at long range and say you're running a shotgun or an SMG, don't even bother shooting at them. Don't bother trying to get in that fight either try to use cover to close the distance for that fight, or just move on and find someone else to fight. So let's move on to the next point in disengagement. So if you can't run for your life, we want you to die fighting. So if you can't escape to cover, if your death can help achieve the objective, or if you think maybe you can outshoot your opponent and just, and just turn on them and get a skill bomb on them, then you can try and die fighting. So these are the exceptions, not the rules. As you get more experienced at games, um, depending on the particular game, you will evaluate for yourself when you can be at a disadvantage and still try and continue the fight. So if, as we talked about earlier, if you're in a head-to-head -head fight and you're probably gonna lose, but you can't escape to cover, don't bother trying. Just try to get some extra damage on the enemy before you die, which could potentially help your teammates clean up that kill. If, say, you're capturing a point and um, you're about to capture it, but you're in a bad position, explosives are coming in or something like that. If achieving that objective is critical to the game mode and it's not something where you can just respawn and come back to try and recapture it, Sometimes dying can be preferable to running for your life if it means that you can achieve an objective. Something like domination, this probably isn't as valuable because you can 
remove yourself from the position. A conquest would be similar. And you can remove yourself from the position, not get killed, hopefully engage the enemy, clear them out, and then finish the capture. But if you're in something like maybe a rush or a uh, search and destroy, and maybe you're under a timer, sometimes getting that plant off, getting that objective captured, getting that position destroyed, even if it costs you your life, can mean the difference between winning or losing the game. Uh, and finally, if you just think you're better than your opponent, or you think um, that maybe they're engaging with, maybe they're at longer range and they have an SMG, or maybe you're some elite skill sniper like I am in my uh, Sniper League videos, <laughs> then uh, you may think that, hey, you know what? I may be at a disadvantage here, but I know I can turn this fight. Go ahead and do that. And so what I'll say here is don't run from noobs. If, if you're engaging with someone and they just look like they really don't know what they're doing, maybe take a chance and yes. see if you can come out on top. <laughs> So now let's move on to playing to our weapon's strengths. When it comes to engaging the enemy, it's important to understand your weapon and how it works most effectively. So we're gonna cover first, knowing your weapon's range and TTK, which is it's time to kill. So we wanna know that we primarily, this is obviously game dependent, but these are the general categories of weapons in pretty much every shooter these days. Shotguns and SMGs will be close range weapons. Snipers and semi-automatic weapons will be longer range weapons. And assault rifles will tend to be medium slash every range. In most games with an assault rifle class, these tend to be the most popular simply because they're the most versatile. They bridge the gap between long range and short range they're typically full auto with moderate to low recoil. So they'd kind of be the jack of all trades, but you need to know when you're engaging what type of weapon you're using and what its strengths and weaknesses are. If you're using a shotgun or an SMG, you probably don't want to be walking out into long lines of sight where snipers are watching. You probably want to stick to interiors where there are corridors, room, small rooms, where your close range weapon has an advantage. If you're using a sniper or a semi-automatic, you're gonna to wanna to be inside somewhere or, or covered um, from one direction and then looking out into a larger space so that you can engage people at longer distances. Assault rifles ideally wanna bridge that gap. So medium range engagements. You don't necessarily wanna come around a close range corner with an assault rifle against a shotgun or an SMG. So keep that in mind. And you similarly don't necessarily wanna be engaging a sniper at long range when you've got an assault <laughs> rifle. These oh, extreme ranges will put you at a disadvantage, even though with an assault rifle you will tend to be able to compete at least somewhat, but the bread and butter of the assault rifle is medium range engagements. So clearing areas um, from a decent position of cover, but without super long lines of sight, and being careful when you're rounding corners, like we talked about in, map, in the map movement module, making sure that we're not necessarily rounding corners in a way that's gonna put us super close to someone that might have a shotgun or an SMG, but giving us an advantage to be able to engage that enemy from a slightly longer range to give yourself the advantage. And again, a bit of a theme here, don't start fights that you can't win. So don't shoot at people at long range when you have a close range weapon. Avoid close range encounters when using long, long range weapons. And this is, those two we kind of talked about with the weapon classes, but this third point, engage, do not engage before you're in a position to win because that will give the enemy the time to respond. So if for instance, someone's at long range, you engage them with an SMG, sure you might get two, three, four hits on them, but they will most likely be able to get to cover before you kill them, which gives them the opportunity to respond. If they have a sniper and assault rifle, then they can re-engage you and they will have an advantage. Um, or they can just move off to a different location because they know that you're shooting at them where you could have alternatively not shot at them, closed the distance, tried to use cover or with that, just with them being generally unaware of you, gotten close enough to where your weapon would be more to an advantage. Similarly, if you have a sniper and there's a guy that's relatively close to you, and you're not sure you can hit that shot, sometimes it's better to just sneak away than it is to try and take that shot, potentially miss, put yourself in a disadvantage. So the last point that we're gonna cover in this module is using your equipment because 
engaging the enemy doesn't always just mean with bullets from our guns. So when we talk about using our equipment, grenades and explosives are probably the first thing that you're going to think of. They are great for defeating cover. They are good for engaging multiple or grouped targets. And they can defeat enemy equipment. So they're a good counter for enemies trying to use equipment against you. So one of the main things, or really the primary thing I like using grenades and explosives for is defeating enemy cover. So as I've recommended that you use cover when you engage the enemy, you will run up against skilled enemies who do the same. Unless you're a great shot with like a sniper or they just, for whatever reason, are using cover, but when they start taking damage, don't protect themselves. Um, grenades and explosives can be a great way to land it in behind cover and either flush them out or just kill them while they're behind cover. So primary usage for grenades and explosives, in my opinion, should be defeating cover. This goes for launchers as well, grenade launchers, RPGs. Whenever they're not specifically designed to counter vehicles, you want to use those to defeat cover because of the splash damage. So um, they are also good for engaging multiple or group targets, which is um, good for attacking and defending objectives, right? If you've got people capturing a point and there's multiple of them, getting an explosive in there can be really great, as well as um, clearing rooms. So if there are multiple people in a room, getting an explosive in there can be a good way to either flush them out or just kill everyone that's in there. Um, and when we talk about defeating enemy equipment, when it comes to like enemies leaving like mines or even tactical equipment such as, um, you know, maybe localized radar, like, you know, Call of Duty and Battlefield will have, like, uh, individual placeable radar systems that just scan an area. Explosives can be a good way to deal with those as well. In some situations, you will encounter some kinds of equipment, like trophy systems that will attempt to destroy enemy equipment. And a lot of times, using your equipment just to burn those up so that your teammates or so that you and subsequent spawns can then use explosives in that area. Um, don't necessarily be discouraged from using an explosive just because something's gonna intercept it because you need to burn those systems up as well. And tactical equipment is also extremely important. We can use it to gain an advantage in a fight. We can use it to gain situ situational awareness. And we wanna make sure that we're selecting equipment that complements your specific play style or objective. So. When we say gain an advantage of in a fight, the, th the most common tactical equipment you probably think of is things like stuns and flashes that literally either blind or disable or make it harder for the enemy to fight. That can That's valuable in and of itself. Um, another important thing that it can do, uh, one of my favorite things to do, um, especially in like Call of Duty games, is stun checks, which is to use your tactical equipment like stuns and flash grenades to throw around corners and into rooms to see if you get a hit marker just to see if anyone's there. Also, if it gets a hit, you can probably enter the room and it'll still give you an advantage because they will be slower to react because of that. Um, it can also help you gain situational awareness, like I talked about before, with tracking devices. If you can place something down that'll help you find out where the enemy is, that can be useful as well. So use everything you have at your disposal to your advantage. If you're playing uh, an FPS game and you're just using your gun, you're not using your explosives, you're not using your tactical equipment, you are putting yourself at a disadvantage. You are not making yourself as effective as you could be. And when I say select equipment that complements your play style or objective, first let's address the objective. For instance, if you're trying to defend an objective, something like claymores or mines that you can leave behind can be effective, if sometimes a little bit douchey. Um, but hey, if you're trying to play an objective, it is what it is, man. You gotta play to win. Um, also, if you're playing an objective game mode and maybe your team is stuck at a choke point, using smoke grenades can be a, an extremely underrated and extremely effective way to break through an otherwise stalemate or a situation where you just cannot get to an objective. So keep that in mind when it comes to using tactical equipment to achieve an objective. Other than that, if it's more of a slayer mode or maybe you're just, you know, playing in general, focus on the kind of equipment that complements your play style. If you're a more defensive player, I won't necessarily judge you. You will probably want something more like a claymore or a mine that will protect you in a given area where you are staying. If 
you're the kind of person that likes to move around the map more, you'll want something more tactically uh, aggressive, like a stun grenade or a flash grenade. So keep that in mind. Make sure if you have equipment available to you, available to you that you're using it and that the equipment that you choose is the equipment that's going to help your particular play style and help you do as well as you possibly can. So let's go over a quick summary of what we covered today. Um, I'm not going to reread all this stuff to you, but this is a good point to uh, point out that this slide deck as well as any notes um, that are pertinent to this module will be available uh, at wheeziesgaming.com. I'm going to put a link for this particular uh, module down below. Uh, I post a lot of my stuff to, well, I post every video that I post to Wheezy's Gaming as well in case you just want to go there uh, as a resource outside of YouTube, but especially for the War College series and these larger modules, the slide deck supplementary information is available for this uh, specific module on wheeziesgaming.com. So go check it out. You'll be able to find this. If you want to take notes, if you want to be able to really nerd out on this stuff, uh, feel free to head over there and, uh, and help yourself to that. Um, this has been Enemy Engagement 101. If you missed uh, the modules I've put out before this, um, map movement and situational awareness, definitely go check those out. They are going to help you up your game. There are going to be more modules coming in the future as well as more in-depth breakdowns of the individual tactics and lessons inside of each module. Um, I'm going to be making the War College series a very regular part of my content. So um, if you liked this, leave it a like, share it with your friends. If you think that they need to get better at shooters, They don't worry, they're not going to know that that's why you sent it to them. Just going to be like, oh, this is something cool I want you to watch. It's not because you fucking suck and I need you to get better. Um, subscribe for more content like this. Uh, and I will see you guys in the next module.